Easy E, how are you? Sean E, it's been a long week since we talked. It's, it's been it's, a minute. It's, it's been at least a minute. But before we get into you talking for the majority of this podcast, I'm, I'm going to explain to listeners why I'm not going to do a whole lot of talking for this podcast because I'm going to alienate a lot of people if I do a lot of talking on this podcast because on Friday, I went to see Garth Brooks. And I absolutely love the man. I know a couple of weeks ago on the podcast, we, we talked a lot about Coldplay and stuff, but I think Gar- Garrett Brooks is more alienating to people. So I'm not going to talk about that. And as we record, I always like to give context from recording. We're recording on a Sunday evening. It's, it's quarter past 10 at night. Um, the American football is back. So long time listeners know I'm a big 49ers fan. My team laid an egg. They were horrible. And a few beers watching them. So we're not going to talk about that. But Eric, thankfully for me, you have done a lot over this past week. And before we hit the intro music, and before we get into the 29 hours and 12 minutes, you somehow sat on a bike. And I don't know how you're even able to walk after that. Maybe you're not because you're, you're, you're sitting down and doing this podcast. I haven't really talked too much about it. And you're 722k you've done this week. Before that, we're going to get into you doing like your first half marathon in quite a while. Once we hit this intro music, let's go. That's all my talking, Eric. How did, how did you do a half marathon first? Let's, 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 you know let's put it right back to the half marathon. And, and that, how were that, the legs doing that? That half marathon seems like a month ago. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it seems like so far away. Um, do you know what, right? We'll take it in stages. Half marathon, <laughs> great crack. Uh, we went down with Aussie. We drove the camper van down. So we, uh, we drove down on the Friday. Yeah. Um, we camped in a beautiful spot just by a little castle on the water. And I mean, like, it was torrential when we got there. We were like, oh, no, this is going to be a boring all night. It's just me and him in the van and not a <laughs> deck of cards between us. Um, but then it all just dis- dissipated. The sun came out. And I mean, the the ocean looked like a lake. There wasn't a drop in it. I brought my wetsuit. He had his wetsuit. We said, we'll go for a swim. So we did a 250 meter swim. I brought the wrong goggles. So I had the top half of snorkel goggles. And he couldn't stop laughing at me because the way it pushed me through my lip made me look even more scared than I was. But either way, they didn't work for swimming. So <laughs> it, uh, they do for the old snorkeling, but swimming, it, it wasn't conducive for it. But uh, yes, yeah, so we had a little swim and then got out of the water, had ourselves a nice cup of hot tea, got into bed, slept up early the next day. And I have to say, a camper van to do any event around the country is... I would highly recommend. We really? ate our breakfast. We ate our breakfast in the car park. Waiting for we were there early, parked up first. We ate our breakfast while getting changed, stayed warm, went to the start line five minutes before the race. Unbelievable. And no issues yeah. where you parked beforehand, like sleeping over and stuff like that. It's all Yeah, no, you just you just find your campsite or you, like there's some few hidden gems of campsites. Like there were six or seven other people camp beside us that night, a few down oh, okay. to do the same thing. Like it was it was really cool. And then we drove down, Ozzy made our porridge for the morning, and there was a public toilets along the beach that we just wandered down to and like so get get your business out of the way before the big run. But you had your like when you go thinking of the marathon, we're having yeah. our breakfast at half six in the morning because we have to leave to get in for half seven to beat the traffic, to walk down. And Whereas we were filling the bellies an hour and 15 minutes before we were taking on, you know, like an, mm. it's an optimum time to get that quality of food in that's going to last the whole race. Like, so I'm still not paying for parking for a camper van in Dublin city centre. No, no. <laughs> for for the amount of hours I tend to be there for no. in the day. <laughs> but I tell you what, for around the country, we we'll take Dublin Marathon out of it. What a way to do events. Because yeah. on the back of the van, bike racks, depending on the event you're doing. Do you know you've everything mm. there? You come off the event, you need a shower. There's a shower in the van. You know, like it's nice. it's absolutely brilliant. No, neither of us showered, we just three in the van and we headed <laughs> home, but it was uh, it was absolutely brilliant. So I was doing the half. Aussie was doing the full. Uh, Aussie's longest run before this was 15K. Uh, no business doing a full marathon, but off he went. And uh, we kind of just decided on a pace in the van. It was like, what do you feel like? And he was like, uh, somewhere between maybe 540, 6.30. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'd go with that. It's something, something similar. So we just took off running. And it was the most daunting half I've ever lined up to. It was, it was a bit 
it was a bit miserable um, because the blackest clouds were coming towards us at the start line. And every minute tick passed, they got closer and closer. <laughs> and then at two minutes to race start, it started trickling. And as the race started, I mean, the heavens opened. So for 10K, it was raining upwards. It was that heavy. It was because we were like the first hundred meters, we were jumping over puddles and stuff like trying not to get the feet wet. And then it rained so heavy. It was like, why did we bother dodging the puddles? We were my energy. <laughs> saturated, yeah. But some serious climbs. And I mean serious climbs. Um, but it was comfortable. So we didn't really know what pace. We kind of, you know, get away from the crowd, settle in. Mm. And then we came across the four-hour marathon pacer balloons. And uh, we seen one of the guys who works with us. He was pacing the four hours. So naturally enough, we just said, right, we'll slot it here. It turned out to be a 545 or whatever it was. It was like, it was somewhat there with the plan. So that's where we stuck wow. it. So um, first 10K, not a problem. Heart rate, 150s, really, really good. Rain was just, get, it just distracted so much. But as we cleared 10K into 11K, rain dissipated. And you could see for miles, you could see out to the Skellig Islands, you could see the Blasket Islands as you climbed around the Dingle Peninsula. Like it was really, really good. Some really good climbs, though. Definitely, uh, I think in the half marathon, I'll have to double check the figures, but over 300 meters of climbing, uh, I think, is what I have, like, which is a substantial amount for a run. Like mm. um, the half marathon, probably twice that. Or sorry, the full marathon, they had an absolute mountain run off. Wasn't a double loop, was it? Or was it? No, a no, single loop. So it was really cool. So you run out to literally the halfway point around the peninsula. And there's a pub at the finish line. Very convenient, but brilliant. So you finish. They drive all your bags out. You have all your bags. I got changed. I got warm. And then I got all my food. And I have to say, the food supply at the end of the race was amazing. They had fresh chicken wraps sandwiches bars of chocolate jellies bananas fruit waters you name i honestly it would put the dublin marathon to shame for really? the quality of food the medal the t-shirt for what you got and then when you were finished you could have a pint in the pub they were happy to serve you and then they had 50 seater coaches load you up and drive you the rest of the route so you had to drive by all the marathon runners back into Dingle and you got off the bus and you walked the final kilometre of the run beside all the marathon runners who were making their run in. It was amazing. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that now if I was doing yeah, marathon, no, just seeing you it. getting off after the point and going for a walk. Oh, it was brilliant. And the best part is when you come to the, I'm doing the half marathon, you're doing the marathon, they literally just put cones down in the middle of the road. So, <laughs> Ozzy went right and I said, right lad, look <laughs> and I just the and I had my own little finish line you kind of turn down the lane and cross your own finish line and he just lonely headed off up the hill <laughs> with the with the four hour pacer balloons but in fairness to him he stuck with those balloons the entire way all the way through four, yeah I did a two hour half he did a four hour full so Even all around split after only doing 15k it is phenomenal but the credit to yourself yeah. you've only done was 10 the max you would run up to this point? Or was it even 10 that you ran? I think I did 13 last, the week before. That, that was but it. But you haven't done a lot of runs leading up to no, all the no. cycle stuff you're doing, which we'll get into in a minute. Yeah, I, I think that was my third run in six months. <sighs> or fourth run. You know, just, give or take. I'm looking at your pace now. Uh, 5.36, so even faster than what you were saying to, to Ozzy in, in, in the Yeah, cameraman. yeah, sorry. Yeah, the 5.36. That, whatever the pace worked out to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was it, yeah. But uh, it, was, uh, it was, ah, look, it was, it was, it, pff, my body was not happy with me when I came through 18K. Um, cardiovascularly, fine, because the cycling, mm. absolutely fine. But the pounding, the legs, the, you know, as we came through 18 kilometers, the kind of arch in my foot was sore on my right foot. And right. I could only run on one side of the road because it kind of sloped in favor of the pain. So it, it was it was a bit weird. Uh, but the knees, the knees started to feel it. Uh, it was one thing I definitely noticed. And it was one of those moments where I wasn't tired, but I was like, 
my body is not happy. So it wasn't a case that mentally I gave up and was looking for the out. Yeah. It was a case of, oh boy, left knee. It was like little things started to go. Bits of the plane were falling off. Like it was like, yeah. oh no, that's not good. And then the foot started to go. I, I lost, I left Aussie for a couple of seconds. I was like, I have to stretch this. This is getting too much. I had to actually try and bend my toes in the shoe just to try and stretch my arches. It was just, it was like a ball in my foot. Mm. It was just really uncomfortable. And that probably caused me to do a little bit of funny running, which caused a little bit more. But either way, I had no business doing a two-hour half marathon um, yeah. for the amount of training I'd done. Um, but yeah, it, we, we got through it. We got through so it. Let's just say. At this stage, you, you finished half marathon. You're feeling the pains in the legs. You know you got to get the camper van all the way back to Kildare, head back down to, to Kerry within 46 hours to start what's going to end up being 722k uh, cycle over five days. Are you regretting this half at this stage? <laughs> No, because of the ego. I was like, I'm a legend. I did a half hour. <laughs> um, but then Monday more, so Sunday evening is four and a half hours on a coach all the way down to school in Cork and got there. And as I was climbing off the bus, I don't know if anyone's ever had this feeling. If you've done a heavy leg day, right? And you try and put out your leg, but the muscles just don't work. And you kind of go, whoa, you have the little speed wobble. So your leg kind of goes from under you. So that happened to me coming off the bus. And I was like, "Uh uh-oh. So the hip flexors and the legs were very tired. Very, very tired. And I was up at half six the next morning to start cycling over. There was an orange or yellow weather warning for wind and rain as well. Right. And on the Monday, and yeah, I was I wasn't happy for that for the start, <laughs> but uh, the legs were very tired. But first couple of k, it was actually do you know what the this might sound weird. My body actually needed the cycle. It needed something to spin out the legs and give them a bit of recovery. They just didn't need mountains. <laughs> so, well, they, they say that when you've got a bit of injury, you, you need some movement. The worst thing you could probably, you probably could have done was just sit there for two, three days, not do anything at all. And you would have felt, well, we can't say for sure because hindsight 2020 and all that, but potentially you would have felt worse and felt like, oh, there's no way I start, start cycling now. Um, yeah. So day one, you're going from Mizzenhead up to Tralee. Mizzenhead to Tralee. Okay. 151k and i think it was 17 to 2000 meters of climbing so 6000 feet nearly mm, um, 70 meters so yeah it was the see the garments some garments were saying 2000 some were saying 16 mm. so that's why i'm putting the 300 bracket on it it was somewhere between then i felt every meter of it whatever <laughs> it was so but I did fight a few demons now the rain came down heavy the wind was strong like in the first part of the cycle the wind nearly took me off the bike six, seven, eight times like it was it was horrific Um, it was one of those things you're kind of like should we really be doing this <laughs> but <laughs> sure none of us were going to say no like we're we're all for it like so um, yeah climbing the hills and then the rain really came down and that way it just brought a lot of misery it broke a lot of souls early, um, including my Monday. Monday wasn't a good day for me. Just the tiredness in the legs. I was I was at a deficit before I even started. And even as I was kicking into it, I was like, oh, I'm tired. I'm sluggish. I haven't slept right. I was this. I was that. Mentally, I was like, this hill, look at the size of this mountain. You know, everything, <laughs> yeah. everything was playing into it. The wind was trying to take me off the bike. But I think it was in the first climb up and over Caja Pass, I think is what it's called. Um, it was fine. We went up and over Caja Pass. That was somewhat enjoyable. It was a hard climb. Descending down the other side, good fun. Then uh, we descended into Ken Mare, and then we had to go up mm. Malls Gap. And Malls Gap was tough because at that point we were only 60K in and I was broken. My legs were not firing for me. I was fighting demons and I was starting to climb another mountain. <laughs> and it was that's like, a good 8, 10k up that, that, that hill. If I think that's, yeah. that's on the Ray Kerry there, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Yeah. So you know it well and it finishes yeah. at the tunnel on the top. Mm-hmm. That's, that's a tough climb. I've seen a lot of people 
breakdown on that one on, on the rain carry. Yeah. A lot of pauses and breaks and stuff. And just to backtrack a small bit, just because I'm, I'm interested with the, the the wind and stuff like that. And how many of you were doing this? This Sorry, cycle? the explanation. So uh, 37 cyclists took off in the end. And you all bunched together going for the same speed. And does that make it even harder for like the winds taking every which way? Are, like, are you bunched in with people? Or are you yeah, so out? Oh, how does that work? Depending on, so it was a kind of a suddenly wind, which was really beneficial when we talk about the gap at Dunlow <laughs> in a few minutes. But the, the suddenly wind was kind of playing in our favor. But if we turned down a road and it became a bit of a crosswind, if you were in on the left, you were fine. You were sheltered. So if you were a weaker cycle, cyclists we try and get you in the middle of the group to the left so the wind would kind of shelter you but the wind in front you'd be broken by the couple of cyclists in front of you so your stronger cyclists be breaking the wind and you therefore are keeping the speed but working 30 percent less than the person in front of you is the aim in the game uh as soon as you start climbing though it's every person for themselves you know like the, yeah the you can't be around yeah you can't everyone gets into their own rhythm on the hill different gears and different momentums abilities you, you kind of just have to we'll see at the top job you know yeah. like it's it's one of them but yeah it was like cycling in a group uh that size was phenomenal in in a lot of senses frustrating if you're at the back because it's kind of like a roller coaster the front goes over but the back gets the whip you know like the back is either left behind it's oh, it's, okay. it's like an accordion nearly you know like when they've sped up, they're up to 40 kilometers an hour on the other side as you're still climbing to the top. So as you get to the top, you're left behind. Um, so it's you tend to work very hard at the back because it's an accordion. Like you're, you're constantly speeding up to stay within. So when it hits a hill, you slow down. You almost lose all your momentum and stop. And then as you crest the hill or turn a corner or do anything, you have to get the hammer down to catch up to the group to get back into the, the stream oh, as well. Yeah. But being a, being at the back is not good either. So you don't want to be at the back. You don't want to be at the front. You want to be about four or five cyclists back, um, which is optimum. But uh, on this day, it didn't matter where you were. You were going to suffer. <laughs> like these hills were, these hills were big. But you somehow made it into Tralee anyway, all of this. And, um, yeah. No, six and a half one, hours. So like, what, yeah. are you, what are you doing now for the evening? Are you just having a, a ton of food into you and just resting or? Yeah. So well, day, day one was my worst day. I didn't have a good day. I right. fought a lot of demons. I thought about giving up a lot of times. First time in a long time. Uh, probably since Quest. Quest, I fought demons on a different level. But this time, my legs were still spinning. But mentally, I was like, give up. Just get in the van. Like, you did the matter. You know, you're not right. Mm-hmm. And I just had to fight a lot. It was actually one of the guys was cycling beside me. And he, he was chatting away to me full of energy and whatever else. I honestly think, I said to him, listen, I'm just going to be quiet here for a little while. I just have to get through this next little bit. But he said, I didn't even look at him. I just, I'm sorry. He said, I just looked at him and then just looked down and said nothing for about 10 minutes. <laughs> but I was convinced. I was convinced I had a conversation and politely told him, listen, I'm really sorry, but I just need to stay in my lane here. I've but, uh, such flashbacks of the Ray Carey and seeing that with different people and myself included, just that kind of that glance that, that that says nothing but says absolutely everything as well. Like, yeah. Especially when the hills come up. If people are struggling in those hills, the best thing to do is not say a word to them, like you said earlier. It's just you get to the top and you you see them at the top and, and yeah. you discuss from there. But it was good. But into Tralee, so that night into the hotel. Um yeah, food. Food is food is king. I think on that day I burnt nearly Six thousand calories, um. But you're constantly eating on the bike, gels, jellies, jaffa cakes, date bars. Like the the bag I have in the front is loaded, protein bars. And like by the time you get there, you don't have sugar feeling on your teeth. Mm-hmm. You have that kind of feeling on your teeth because you've been just force feeding yourself. And and just we have a lunch stop on the way, so you're trying to eat a sandwich there. Mm-hmm. But as you so that night again, it's sort your bike, clean down your bike, oil your oil your chain, all the weather, the rain, make sure you've no punctures or little nicks that are going to carry into the next day. Then you're trying to wash your because I wanted to wear the aircore gear. I only bought one set, but I wanted to wear it every day. So I had to wash the gear, dry the gear, get myself ready, pack my day bag with all my food, warm clothes. If it came off the bike, change clothes, underwear. So you're constantly thinking of everything for the next day. So by the time we get in at, I think it was half five, 
it's eight o'clock by the time you're fully ready to go, I need to eat dinner. So then you eat your dinner and then you're like, I'm, I'm fit for bed. So mm-hmm. you're into bed and then you're up at half six the next day. Breakfast at seven and when wheels are spinning at eight o'clock. Like, so you're constantly just on a schedule of time and get this ready, get that ready and let's go. And then before you know it, you're on the bike. So you haven't really had a chance to go, do you know what? This isn't for me. <laughs> like, it's just, <laughs> it's, everything is a schedule and a time and a this. And it's just, you're constantly on the next thing, next thing, next thing. And before you know it, you're 20 kilometers in going, this isn't so bad anymore. Yeah. You know, like it's, it's weird. It, it sounds like it, it definitely played in your fa- favor because day two, you went longer. It was 173k from Tralee to Galway. Well, according to Strava, anyway, roughly 173k. Uh, the elevation, not quite as much, but definitely longer on, on the bike. Um, when you're on that, is it just 20k in? It's like, okay, I feel better. I feel good for day two ahead. Or is it, is it more the same struggles in your mind? The, the very start of every day, no matter how good you were feeling, the first 10 to 15 kilometers, I would say, if anyone said it wasn't a dark place for them, they're lying. Right. Uh, even the top guys, because the body's warm enough to it. You've just eaten as much breakfast as you physically can. And as the week goes on, the stomach, the body is deciding where it's sending its energy and the stomach starts to shrink. And it's like, you're not, no, we're, we're not wasting time on the stomach because you're doing X, Y, and Z to the muscles. So the ability to take on more food is, is shrinking. Um, so you've rammed in the extra slice of toast that would normally be normal, but it feels like the extra slice <laughs> and you've got this gut on you and you're getting on the bike because you know it's going to be seven hours and you're pedaling and you're burping and you're sore and your arse is sore and your legs are still tight from yesterday and you're like, oh, this is misery. And then you reach the first town and it has a monster hill in it and you're like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> and, that, and that's essentially the feeling. But after 20K, you hear people starting to start talking. You talk through 10K. You swap a few jellies with each other, you know. And then before oh you know God. it, you're at your 50K stop. And then just the process starts again. Not as extreme as the morning, but the first 5K, quiet. And you, you just keep going. And I suppose mentally for us, you always knew where the next full-time break was. Just to get off the bike, go toilet, stretch, and take on the harder-to-eat foods like the larger protein bar where you're chomping and chewing. Mm. Um, because on the bike, it's jellies, it's gels, it's date bars, it's a Jaffa cake, if you can manage it. It's it's easily accessible foods that are eat- Like some were eating cliff bars and I'd be looking at them. They'd have jaws of steel from trying to chew these while climbing a <laughs> hill. And if you can do it, well done. I, it wasn't for me. I was, I was the quick sugars. I was very much a, when I stop, I will eat a banana a cliff bar or whatever it is uh, Connecticut cookies brownies you know like anything yeah. I could that was a bit more dense but everyone was on the bike it was what's easy and what's what can I get in quickly to help you breathe as well I find if I'm I'm running or yeah. eating or whatever it is if I'm trying to have food when I'm running I'm like I can't can't do both at the same time I need to stop have the food let it let it digest a bit but just even swallow it before I start just clear running. them out just, yeah just, exactly just clear them out before I keep going I, I'd yeah. be very similar to you on that one I, I'm the same I just I just had to keep it quick and easy but then you you reach long straights where you're tucked in nice in the group the group is essentially your legs are spinning but they're not working hard the group is pulling you along at 29 30 kilometers an hour and then you just take out your water bottle and just sip it you know it's like you're just after going to the bar and you're like I'm going to take on all my isotonics and this and that and you're just taking in a good soap a little bit of a jelly and before you know it at that speed you're too two kilometers three kilometers you put your water away and you're through another five and you're like oh that was a nice little mental break because you can see the next hill coming so you start to kind of right put all my stuff away zip everything up we're climbing or we're descending and so they're they're nice little even though you're still exercising nice lulls i suppose is a weird way of describing it but there is nice lulls um so yeah day two really long day um but started to feel a lot better you know like a, a hell of a lot better uh, for me, it was like the marathon left on Monday and right. Tuesday was, OK, you're on the level playing field now with everyone. Um, so that got us all the way up to Galway um, Tuesday night. So through the burn, some great scenery through the burn and uh, relatively flat. Like it, there was climbs, but relatively OK all the way into Galway. Pretty much stick with the Wild Atlantic Way in this one or have I got that wrong? Uh, we did and we didn't. Yeah, like it, <laughs> we didn't go out of our way to cycle 
oh, every inch of the coastline. It was but just the we, quickest route. We did take, for the most part, like the quickest route is 560 kilometers, but we okay. didn't follow the M of 17 or we didn't, we, we followed towns that gave us good stops with right. good garages and pubs and stuff that weren't major towns because we were conscious not to annoy everyone on the roads and you do as a group of cyclists like it's mm. everyone who's stuck behind is annoyed and hates you and wants to knock you down it's it's ridiculous but it is true um so we did take the quieter roads which added to the 700 and whatever kilometers um and we'll get back to that i forgot to start my garment a few times it is actually 753 kilometers okay. <laughs> <laughs> i think we said it's there we, we haven't talked since you've done this really yeah. so i was like I, we're, i'm only going off what the the technology in front of me is saying which not the strides, there was a right. lot of times it became one of the catchphrases was me telling everyone to start their watches because i kept getting caught out by not starting my watch i'd lose a 5k <laughs> here and a 7k here but um but yeah it's so in the Galway, Galway was our, our halfway point. And this was the weirdest thing. Like our longest training cycle that we did as a group was 110 kilometers. Right. We got to Galway after 180 or 160 through the mountains. And then everyone was like, well, it's only 110 kilometers tomorrow. That's our easy day. And everyone was like, yeah, yeah, fair. No, no, it is an easy day. It's only 110. I was like, Hold on a fucking minute. It's like 110 kilometers is still 110 kilometers on a bike. And it's 110 kilometers after you've done 350 kilometers. <laughs> so, time. like any good lads and lassies, they decided to go on the beer. <laughs> so, our next day uh, was there was a few sorry heads on bikes as we cycled through uh, the rest of Galway into Mayo. And uh, we actually stopped off in the pub where uh, Lean Ann, where the field was filmed. And I have a okay. nice photo sitting at the fire and the Bull McCabe's photo was above the fire and stuff. And it's uh, so like little elements like that just added nice little bits of history to, to the cycle. Mm. And yeah, it was it was cool. Um, and then we, we made our way from Galway all the way up to Castlebar. But that was a lovely one. The, there was a lovely new road and we had the tailwind. But again, the rain, the rain was disgusting. I was going to ask about that because uh, you, you're, this, according to Strava, could be wrong again, this is your fastest one. Got on yeah. the shortest one. This is your fast one. A fair few people in the points as well. Not that we're yeah. going drinking. And we had but... a tailwind coming out of Galway and they've just redone this road. I think it's the N59 Clifton. I, I could be wrong because I was just staring at a Lycra arse and a tire. I had no real idea where I was. So we were cycling along. And I looked at my watch and I was like, Jesus, we're going. Like, you you can tell when the group is pushing because I start to notice the legs working harder and the heart rate's going up. But we were clipping, like going quick. And I was like, this is easy. I was like, there's something weird going on here. Looked at my watch. We were doing 40 kilometers an hour down this road. And I was like, whoa. And the whole group was together. No one was struggling. We were just sticking at this pace. And it was only after I kind of caught the right tail, I seen the flags, tailwind behind us. And as a group, we were moving. And uh, that's it gave us an average of 28 kilometers an hour for the day or something. It was it was something terrifying, but it was brilliant. Um, but yeah, it was really, it was really cool. Some some nice scenery there. And I made our way into Castle Bar, yeah, for another another resting night. Another session before you went oh, no, no, another uh, session. I had, the sessions were gone. In Galway. I was still in recovery mode. In Galway, right. I had a pint of orchard sieves and three pints of my wadi with my dinner, which I was barely able to eat. Um, the body was shrinking. I, I respect the guys that went out on the pints and, and showed up the next day and put in a performance. Like, I don't know, but I, I think having done the courses on nutrition and, and understanding what I'm actually doing to myself, mm. I found it very hard to go, sure, just get the vodka. You know, like, I, and and... I just couldn't. It was just, I wanted to get into bed with a massage going. I wanted to enjoy the cycling element. Yeah. Like, I can go on the beer with anyone at any time. And I just, I just didn't feel it. But I got lots of abuse for it. But I, I yeah. <laughs> you know, like there was, there was other things to play there anyway. But yeah, Castle Bar. But again, I had a beer in Castle Bar. It was just nice. It was nice for dinner to just have a beer, go to bed, reset. We watched the Liverpool match, ate pizza, 
but I felt that pizza the next morning on the bike to Donegal. I was like, oh my God. Too much pizza. Just sitting in your stomach. Yeah. Ah. Oh, it was so bad. But it was calorific, it was huge, and it went in over the course of an hour and a half. So you couldn't you couldn't really complain. Mm. Day day four then up to Bundorn, then you're here hitting well over the 500k mark in a week, which is probably more than you've ever cycled before in your life. Well, in a week stage in your life at this stage. Yeah, well, every day you kept telling me, today is your longest cycle. Today is your longest cycle. <laughs> then Wednesday was like, oh, you didn't cycle as long. Pathetic. And then, <laughs> then uh, yeah, the, the next one uh, was good. It was actually, it had some vicious climbs in it. It was, we all kind of expected it to be moderately okay. But it did have some tasty little climbs in it. Um, but it was good. Uh, we rounded it. Yeah, we, we stopped off a couple of little shops. It, it wasn't a... There was nothing major about it. We just kind of had to get from Castlebar to Bundor and some nice sights uh, along the way. Surely, oh, I, I could be wrong. could be the Ox Mountains. I can't remember what they were called. Um, but yeah, we had a couple of nice climbs, a couple of really tough climbs. Um, oh, I got a puncture on this day. Actually, oh. yeah, this is... This is the day we got. Uh, I'll never accuse people of taking a wrong turn. But anyway, we took a wrong turn and um, <laughs> we ended up on the greenway and it was filled with stones and little bits of shrubs. And it was only a matter of time before puncture showed up. And I was like, please don't be me. Please don't be me. <laughs> and sure enough, you asked for it. <laughs> came. But there was some phenomenal cyclists and athletes on this trip and i mean like phenomenal like some were in raw some are doing ironman and triathlons like no other like they're just mm. phenomenal guys so i got the puncture and i pulled in and i was like oh no because i didn't i wasn't getting in the van that was certain i was cycling every kilometer uh so it was just going to be a matter of how long will it take me to fix this and then i have to cycle on my own till i catch them um, but I was blessed. Uh, Barry Smith's one of the guys, and he's a phenomenal uh, athlete. And he helped me change the tire, and it was like an F1 pit stop. You <laughs> think this man work. He, I, I was going to start fixing it, and he just kind of took over, and just wheel was out, tube was out, this was in, and four minutes later, the wheel was back on the bike, and we were cycling. Wow. And as we were starting to cycle, he says, just slot in behind me, and hold on. I was like, all right. So on our own, remember I was talking about the group with the tailwind? Yeah. We didn't have a tailwind. We had a slight headwind. He was cycling at 40 kilometers an hour. And I was trying to keep up behind him. And it was amazing. I was working hard. But this is where I started to reach a new level in cycling. I've never got to. And I was gassed but I couldn't let him down. And I just found another level. Yeah. And then I found another level. And then we went up a hill and I started to go backwards. <laughs> because <laughs> The levels I, are gone. I weigh a good bit more than him. So, and he climbs like a mountain goat. He's unbelievable on the hills. So we kind of had to slow back on the hill. But then once we got back to the flat element, I could, I could power down and mm. stay with him. Um, so it took us 10 kilometers at 40 kilometers an hour to catch them. So we were a good 15, 16 minutes, like chasing them. And then we caught them and I was gassed. I just about got in. I was breathing heavy. He was like, well done. He was barely sweating. I was like, Jesus. oh my God. And with that, just as I settled in, we took a left turn and we climbed over a mountain. I was in bits. Oh, I would have oh, gotten the van. <laughs> yeah but I couldn't we kept putting uh, yeah, like, someone kept uh, clipping the faces off people and then putting them in a stock image of the van so every time someone got in the van they got added to the picture of heads in the van uh, it was very good it was the wall of shame essentially but um, but at the, the very end again I don't know much about cycling really you know, I know a bit um, but these guys cycle you know like they, they know a bit but the last thing we kind of got to it was about 30 kilometers to go. We pulled in for a, a quick toilet break to kind of get through the last. Um, but the boss man was saying like, look, we're going to work as a group. He set the rules for everyone. And he was like, we are going to go quickly as a team. 
and what you want to do with them. We talked about the wind and we're going to work up on the right. So you power up on the right hand side of the groups too. We're in twos. So you're working up on the right and then you power into the front. And once you get into the front, you slow down a little bit. The next person goes and the group, because then you have the wind shelter to kind of get your recovery. But the group was moving against the wind at 40 kilometers an hour. Ooh. And it was going to be a case of you just have to hold on as long as you can. And, and, and that was part of the rules. If you died, you died. You made your own way to the next town. And that was 21 kilometers away. Mm. So 21 kilometers was going to be a half hour of hard, hard work. So we were cycling and cycling and it was going well. And everyone, in fairness, a good portion of people made it through about three rounds of this. But then it was like all at once, everyone broke. Once one broke, it took five with them, six with them. They were waiting so, for one to go. <laughs> oh, stuff. So I was the last to pull out onto the right. So once I made my way back on the left, it was now my power line. So I was in on the right. I was pedaling and pedaling and pedaling. And I got up behind them. And with that, five in front of me decided, nope, not for me. Slow down. I just pulled into the left. And then I was on my own to try and catch the lead group. I was oh. like, I started shouting at one of the lads. I was like, you fucking stitched me. I was giving them awful <laughs> abuse. I felt terrible afterwards. I had to, I absolutely, I probably used too much energy screaming at them. So then I just had to get smart. I had to slot in behind them, get a rest, power on, catch the next person, catch the next person. But I eventually caught the lead group with some top, top cyclists. I don't know how I did it, but I caught them. And I knew I'd done something good. When I looked to the, the same guy, Barry, <laughs> who uh, carried me along because I kept slagging him then afterwards that, you know, uh, anytime we'd race up a hill, I'd, I'd, I'd get beside him with like five meters left up a hill. I'd be like, race you to the top. And then I'd be <laughs> like, <laughs> but anyway, I got beside him in the right hand side of this now group of six. And I pulled up beside him and was like, bet you thought you'd never see me. And he was like, what the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> And it was at that point I knew I did something good with my day. Um, so I stuck with these and like, I just reached pits of you're done, stop. And then something else was just like, shut the fuck up and keep going. It's that extra, yeah. just kept, it just kept coming. I was like, mm. this is unbelievable. I should be getting worse as the day goes by. Like, but this is class. But eventually it got to a point I actually couldn't keep. With about 4, 4K to go, I couldn't keep it. And I kind of dropped and so did two others. One kept going, caught them again, but I just had to keep powering. But I found enough in it to with me and another guy to just keep powering the two of us. So the two of us worked as a mini team to try and catch them, but they were too good. Like they, these guys yeah. are great. Um, but yeah, over, it took us 21 kilometers. We were there. We averaged a 40 kilometers an hour pace. And uh, I think down the final hill, I reached 60 kilometers an hour powering as hard as I could. Like, well, and it wasn't a steep hill, it was a, a decline, but we were pushing hard. So, yeah, out of the 37, um, we came in fifth, like the, me and your man kind of just came in behind oh, top. top guy. And I was like, Jesus, I think I kind of like cycling. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting more confidence in cycling as the week goes on then, is it? Oh. Or is, is that happening? Yeah, the, like just your bike handling skills, your ability to pull a jacket off while you're cycling pull a bottle out you know like mm. you're reaching in your back pocket taking out half a sandwich you know like you just <laughs> you just you oh, just live you live eat breathe it like it's it's but for me it was the ability in the legs to find extra that i just mm. don't have when i'm running um because i think it's just weird because the heart is not working hard so it's all mental then yeah. you know like i think in that point when we were we're doing this race as such I think with the heart rate only went to 160. Do you know one? It, you know, like it wasn't in the 180s that I've seen over a 5k, or do you know there was just it was just something about it, um, and that I, I actually I actually loved it. It was great, um, but it's not a. I'm class. Look what I did. I was I was shocked. I was like, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ! I, was like, I shouldn't I shouldn't have been here, um, but yeah, it was, it was it's absolutely brilliant. It was really, really good. Yeah. But you're put in that environment where I was literally, this is sink or swim now. Like the, the guy yeah. can stitch you, like you said, and you're like, right, I have to, even that, that, that being annoyed at someone or whatever it is, that kind of gives you the energy to spur out. Like, right, I'm going to catch these guys yeah. now because I'm yeah. stitched. Like the, you know, the world's against me. You got to find a way to keep going. But the, the last day then you're, you're set up to go from 
going down up to the mizzen head obviously is the end of it mallon head sorry mallon head's the end of it 153k according to strava where you stop the start it could be around 160k what's the mindset going to final day is it like my god thank god this thing is about over or how am i gonna get through this last day how are you feeling heading into this last one for me it was thank god it's the last day right um i made a few deals with the body <laughs> <laughs> you know like I, I i fought some demons and i made some promises and i asked a lot i know that might sound weird to people but i made deals with the body Do you know i was like mm. give me this extra little bit on that race the night before give me this extra there's only one more you know I was, I was getting aggressive with the body to just give me the one more day and as the cycle was going my body was like every 10 kilometers closer it would show up with a little nail going this is your last day you know like the, <laughs> You're done. the little reminders of listen buddy you remember this feeling yeah it was here yesterday but we made you forget about it yeah well it's back <laughs> so um i was in good form right i wouldn't say that for everyone there was a few people fought some very hard demons on that last day um i noticed a lot of people weren't in as good as form um you could see a few souls leave a few bodies that day um, as we know from David Goggins, like took a few souls, like going up a few hills, I was able to push myself hard, hard. And as I passed by people, I looked at them and they looked back at me and I could tell the soul left their body like it was <laughs> it was bad uh, for some people. Um, but getting to that finish line was in the head and the weird mentality of, well, we cycled 110K to lunch. We only have 40K to go. We only have 20 to go. But some people in that last 20, I don't know whether their minds gave up on them a bit early. Uh, the bodies gave up on them a bit early, but it's gonna, this is going to be weird. You know when you need to go to the toilet? The closer you get to the toilet, the more you need to go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think the closer people got to the finish line, the more tired they were. That they just does make didn't, sense. They didn't just set the mindset to just like be as quick as you can to the finish line and then worry about how sorry you are you know they kind of were like it's the last day it's this it's only and it just trying to survive yeah and in the last 20k there were some serious hills they were that bad that you actually couldn't stop or you'd fall over oh my god and some people did because you can't clip out you're going that slow in the lowest gear and you're grinding and grinding and grinding makes sense you try and clip out you're gonna fall over so a few people here then go Go over that those hills and stuff and, and people falling over and rest. Were you guys want to do this big group finish together or was it just every person yeah. themselves gets the finish line? For the most part, we did. And in the last uh we'll say one kilometer, the last kilometer is a climb to the top. So the group got to the base of this last climb pretty much together, and then it was sure we'll see us yeah. across the finish line and every man and woman for themselves to to get to the top really um so some petted a few egos and burst across the line and mm. um, for me it was about getting up there now i did push hard and encourage people up there and have fun and work hard but eventually it got to a stage the hill was that kind of extreme at the end that you kind of got blinkered to whoever was around you you just had to get up the hill like so yeah. and then once you crossed the finish line it was keep going enough to remember there's people coming behind you click out and just enjoy the view. It was a weird kind of anticlimax. There was no no medal, no uh, no anything. Do you know when you cross no the finish circumstance line? circumstance or anything like that? It was just... Yeah, it was just, you cross, you, you got to this point and that was it. <laughs> it was oh, you're just, just like, oh. so, that's the finish. You're yeah, done. Yeah, the, you're done. So, there's, there's hit the watch. Took, took a few photographs. I did get, it was, a, for me, it did... Everyone kind of, we took all the photos and it was all kind of, again, procedure, get this done, get that done, get this done. But then it was kind of just left on the rock on my own, you know, away from everyone. And I did have a nice little moment um, there where I felt a bit of personal achievement, where whatever about anyone thought of me, I couldn't, Huge you know, it was, I very much had a fuck everyone kind of attitude at yeah. that point. And I was like, you know what, you did something. Whether yeah, and it's it was yeah, I did. I had a nice moment there where I had a kind of realization of what I had done, you know, and what we had done as a group. But at the end of the day, my legs still had to turn, you know, like it's mm. it's it's you do get that little bit of personal satisfaction, I suppose, as well. But as well as delighted for the group, because 
I wouldn't have broke that headwind if it wasn't for the 37 others, you know. So you appreciate I wouldn't do it on my own. Uh, right. But either way, the time was in the saddle for 29 hours over the five days. So How are yeah. you walking? Do you know what? I had 99 problems, but my bum wasn't one. <laughs> I think that could be the, po- the, the podcast <laughs> this week. <laughs> um, I went into detail with it with someone who asked me about chamois cream or chamois cream or whatever you want. We call it chamois cream. But it's the cream you put on before you go cycling and uh, you put it in those hard to reach places and it is amazing. Um, the, the the gear we got, I don't mind giving them a shout out, Spin 11. We wore Spin 11's gear. Um, they were the best pair of shorts I've ever worn on a bike. Um, I did not re i felt the pain of it like as in it, sitting on the saddle when you first get on it's like whoa but yeah. i didn't feel no during the, the breaks only, and stuff though right when you're the off the bike when you're off the bike for a little bit and you're st- you're taking your stop for 20 30 minutes on a bit of food that initial hopping back on the bike before you go again yeah. is like oh my god how am i gonna get yeah. used to this all over again it's just a little ooh, you're yeah. still there <laughs> um but apart from that like i didn't sit really in another seat bar eating dinner going to bed or the bike that was it so for about an hour it sat in another chair but when saturday rolled around i went to sit on the beach and it was kind of firm sand i was sitting on the beach on my recovery day and my arse was so hard and i was like <laughs> no done with this come on <laughs> so, no 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 beach day whereas on other cycles with other shorts and stuff and not wearing mm-hmm. chamois cream and all that after about an hour in the saddle, I was like, oh, this is uncomfortable. I was changing seat and positions. I was doing this. I was doing that. Whereas on this one, it was pain in shoulders, the pinch in the traps. It was pain around the knees after a climb. It was pain in the calf. But never did I once have to readjust myself for a pain in the bum, um, which was really, really good. Over that distance and that length of time, I'm very surprised in how unscathed I am from it. So I can only kind of put it down to one the gear I wore because it was still the same saddle that made me feel uncomfortable. And two, the cream was the only different thing I used. Um, but absolutely brilliant. Yeah. But I am noticing it today, like sitting in the car on the drive home. I was like, ooh, like boom is or it's only when I'm sitting in other seats. I'm like, actually, yeah, it is kind of sore. We go down the rabbit hole in this cream thing. So I'm trying to avoid it because I've never heard of this stuff before. <laughs> But moving yeah. swiftly on, looking over the five days, is there anything over those cycles do you wish should have done that or could have done that? This would have made it a little bit easier. And then on top of that, would you do it again? Um, I wouldn't have done a half marathon on Saturday. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I wouldn't have done that. And I would have enjoyed Monday. I would have enjoyed those hills. Um, that's definitely one thing. Um, the other thing I learned was put food you like on the bike Fine. you can buy the correct things so you can have the very fancy cliff bar or this bar and so i know i keep saying cliff bar but it, it could be anything like if you don't eat oranges or crave an orange don't put an orange on the bike gotcha. i had percy pigs leo the lions from aldi do you know and like when you're in the depths of oh, i feel shit you take out five Leo the Lions, you shove them in your mouth, you're like, this is great. You know? <laughs> and, and it was the one lesson I learned, like nutrition was one thing, just mm-hmm. getting food on board, getting the isotonics on board, getting the electrolytes on board. P- pick a flavor that you like. Yeah. I had a mango flavor. And then one of the guys gave me, I, was, I ran out of water on one. The, the leg was longer than we were told it was going to be. There was an extra 15K. That happened a lot, actually, which is a bit demoralizing. But the... Um, <laughs> So I knew I'd only 5k to the stop. So I guzzled my water. Yeah. Turned it at 20k to go to the next stop. So cycling behind beside one of yes. the guys, I some of mine and I had a taste of it. He had cola flavored. And I was like, that is beautiful. My mango one tastes like shit. <laughs> um, so that would be one thing I learned was just put stuff you like. So I had these date bars that I got in the Catalan and they were great. Don't get me wrong. But after five of them, oh, they were the worst. Hmm. They were great for a single one. So I put a single one of them in because I knew it was good for one. And then I put a packet of Jaffa Cakes because the sugars were the same. It's just food the same. Need, yeah. It was soft enough that I could chew it really quickly, swallow it with a bit of water. It encouraged me to take on a bit of water and it wouldn't be 
you know, like nuts and stuff. You're just like, oh, no. you know, like chewing for days. It's it's gone. So I I knew that I liked the food that was on the bike, and I was encouraged to eat it because it's like ah, it's a jaffa cake, it's a jelly, it's you know, and then the 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 gels went down a treat down as well with them, you know. So um, so that was one thing I learned, and and would be my advice for anyone is is definitely eat what you like. Yeah, eat eat food that makes you feel happy, <laughs> like that, genuinely. I I know it's not not nowhere near the same, but when I did the ring of Kerry and when I did the the trail run last year, the the Nutri Grain bars, the the breakfast bites, it's, it's like a bit of chocolate there in it, and then I'm like, I feel like I'm having a chocolate bar, but then I also feel like it's healthier because it's Nutri Grain. <laughs> it's really just food and, and calories. Like when I was down in Kerry. We had to stop by three or four shops because every shop hadn't got me chocolate breakfast, Nutri-Grain bars. It's like, this one, only strawberry. This one, no Nutri-Grain. This one, nothing again. Like, for the fourth stop, I ended up paying, like, 2 20 a bar. <laughs> I couldn't get a box of six, like, a four quid. It was, like, two twenty bar, like, 10. And like, ah, not 10, but I had a fair few. It was, like, I need them for the cycle just in case. But when you have something you like, it just makes it that that much. Yeah. Just yeah, nicer and better because you're, you're just really getting calories into it at that stage of an, of, of an event. And to answer your last question would i do it again yes but not for a year or two um being honest it's just it's a lot it's a it's a it's a big ask it's a long week um and i know we will do it again and work but it won't be the next three years if it was on a three-year cycle yeah i at a hundred percent i i i i think if it was every year it would lose its novel it would it would lose okay. the importance it would just be another thing that happened, Do you know. Whereas, I got you. If it only comes around once every couple of years, it's like, ah, oh, yeah, let's cycle the length of the country again. Yeah, yeah, you know. But, um, it's it's a lot. We have a fantastic support network with us. We have a transit van to pick us up if we puncture. We have a crew cab carrying spare tires, tubes, food, our bags, different levels of gear, warm gear, cold gear, whatever the situation brings for us, sun creams. And it's only going to be 40 kilometers away or 50 kilometers away at the next stop. You know, you can get out, get what you need out of the bag, get on the bike, keep going. So without that support network, I don't know if I'd do it. I don't know if I'd do it without 37 other people dragging me along. You know, it's probably a very bad time to ask this question at the very end because some people could be listening going, oh, this sounds like a great challenge. This is only something specific to your work. Is it? Um. No, there's many clubs in it that will do this. Oh, okay. Um, there are clubs in the country, and if, if you go onto the Cycling Ireland website, you will see the event of Mizzen to Man. And there are there are clubs who will organise this, and you I, can partake. You okay. you absolutely can partake. But um, for us, we did it for charity. We raised twenty thousand um, for Lark, which is a cancer support sanctuary in the Midlands. So it basically gives respites and support to families dealing with cancer. And we raised 20 grand. We've done it for the last, I think the first cycle was in early 2000s. Don't quote me on the dates. Um, yeah. It's very much history for me. I'm part of the new kind of group who are, who are doing it. But it's always been this charity. And it's, yeah, to, to, to have a goal like that, like it'd be great to do the event. Um, do you know, like you do the marriage and you get your medal job. Mm hmm it's nice to do an event, but when there's a meaning behind it, it just made it a bit better. You know, it, yeah, it did make it that little bit better that when cars were giving you the finger as they were driving by you, it was like, okay, but well, we've raised 20 grand. That's going to help people. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it's, I liked that motivation, but equally three years to get that motivation again, I think it'd be a good timing. You've, you've just forgotten about the pain. And you're starting to get the rose tint, and then you're like, "Yeah, no, that that would be something good to do again with it with a new group and a new challenge." And yeah, so it was good. With that in mind, and it sounds like the pain is still fresh. It's 49 days as a recording until the double marathon. How are you set? Uh, day two, day one of training was the Dingle Half Marathon. So right. uh, day two, I took of the training, week off. <laughs> yeah, I just took a I just took a week off. Um, so day two of training is tomorrow with a three to five K run, because I think that's all the legs will give me. Oh, understandable. So, but once you get the first run out of the way, then the body is reset and knows what's coming. So, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I think it would be unrealistic. And this is important and a lesson I probably, I'm only starting to come to terms with as I turn 30 years of age. Um, 
Dublin is going to be enjoyable and a realistic target needs to be set. So I did a two hour half. So a four hour full in the next five, six weeks should be realistic goal. Um, yeah. I don't know if I'll beat the three and a half. I think it'd be silly to think with six weeks training, I'd be going out to break a three and a half hour marathon given that I'm only starting now. But stranger things have happened. You never know. And so the training going on, on that note, because all else I'm going to say was Gareth Brooks was fantastic. Oh my God, <laughs> it was so good. So good. Unlike my night or tonight. Anyway, with that say, thank you very much for listening to this week's episode of the Any Given One Day podcast. That's it from myself and Eric. Take care. Bye.